This video is about types in Java. So let's try to look into types. What is it and uh, what can we actually do with types? So I have this small example game here. Uh, we, can, we can look into some of the code on that. So we just have, when I reset it, I have something move, moving around and stuff like that. So let's just look into the code and get looking at types. So uh, a type um, is oftentimes the same thing as a class. So we have different classes in here and these are th the same as type. So world is a type, jworld is a type, actor is a type, dog is a type, elephant is a type. So it's just type really means type of class in that sense. So this, this over here is not types, these are instances of a specific type here or instances of a specific class. So type is just to name whatever we are talking about. So if we go inside the code, we can see types all over the place. For example, we can see here that uh, we are naming the class jworld. So jworld will be a specific type. If we uh, look inside, let's go to here, for example, we have a type here called int. We have a type here called void. We have a other ints here as well. So types are different kinds of of uh, classes, you could say. But in Java, there are there are different kinds of uh, types. There is uh, one thing which is the classes or the more complex um, types, and then there are the more simple types, something like numbers and and stuff like that. So let's just try to Google it and try to see what we can figure it out. So I'll just go with Java types and let's go for some nice images here. And we can see something like this would probably do it. Maybe this one. Okay, that's the primitive ones. Okay. Let's just go for that one first. So we have different uh, data types in, in, in Java. So in this case here, we have, uh, this is the list of what we call the primitive types. So the easy one to explain was the one I, I showed you before, namely the classes. So a type can be a class. So for example, potato here is, uh, can be a type, but it, it can also be the primitive types. And one of them is the one called int, which are numbers um, which are not floating point numbers, like over here. So a number like one or five or six can be integers, but one in, in the American standard, it would be 1.67 and European, it's often 1.67. Uh, these are floating point numbers. So there are many different types in Java and it looks complex, but it's, it's really not that complex. So we have basically, we have four types. We have characters, which are used for uh, strings, which is a text. So character is just one single character like that. And then we have the simple type called integer. And integer is not really, uh, we have byte, short, int, long. These are different kinds of integers. And we can see down here, we can see the size of, of these different integers. For example, let's go down here. So the smallest one, we can see here, here they are. The smallest one is one byte. And that kind of integer is one byte long. So because one byte is actually um, eight bits, it can only hold uh, an amount of values that equals eight bits. So eight bits is like all the numbers you can create with only zeros and ones if you have eight of them. So for example, uh, if you have one bit, you can either have the number zero or one. So you can represent zero or one. If you have two bits, you can have like uh, zero, zero, you can have uh, zero one, you can have one zero and one one. So so with two bits, you can have four. So it kind of grows like that. So with one bit, you can have uh, two and with two bits, you can have four 
and three bits you you double that to eight etc so when you have eight bits um, you can you can actually have 256 different kinds of numbers and because numbers can also be negative the numbers will go from minus 128 to 127 and if you kind of add up those numbers uh, you're missing something right because uh, and uh, it, it will be 255 but uh, you also have zero as a number so that's why one of them that's why you have minus 128 and not uh, positive 128 you can only go to positive 127 so in a byte uh, you have eight bits and the reason to sometimes use bytes is if you don't need to save that much information if you have numbers that are always within this range you're not, you're not using up that much space on in memory or on your hard drive other than if, if space wasn't a problem and speed wasn't a problem we can just use the, the long uh, type integer type any day because that would be incredibly large so we see here it's only numbers from minus 120 to 127 then there's the one called short and if we look up here it's two bytes and we can see here now we have uh, 36 oh 65,000 <coughs> uh, 536 different kinds of values and again it's the same if you take these two numbers this one is a bit smaller because zero kind of uh, it's in the middle of of all of this here. So these are, are numbers, uh, short numbers, where you need numbers that are bigger than bytes but a, a bit smaller than integers. The most used one is actually integer here and and it goes to around minus two billion and that is often enough for whatever you need to to be doing and also in the positive sense so and that is uh, 32 bits that it uses each time you save one value so no matter if you save this number here or you save zero you will use uh, up 32 bits on that so so if you have a lot of very small numbers it might not be a good idea to use the the integer for saving that there is a popular example of this, a problem. You probably know the, uh, the this one, Gangnam style, not lyrics, please. So if we look uh, on YouTube on this video called Gangnam Style, oh, there's a lot of commercials. But um, if you look at the number here, there's actually more than 3 billion views and there is uh, like an urban legend of this that uh, all of these views actually broke YouTube so originally when they created YouTube they actually used an integer for saving the amount of views on a video so they were saving this in a database and they used an int for that but int only goes to 2.1 billion approximately but at some point they actually went over that and what really happens when you went when when you go over that uh, amount depends a bit on the how they implemented it. But what it will often do is it will go back to the smallest possible number, kind of start over, so you would get some weird minus number. But I heard from YouTube that uh, it's actually more of a legend than a real story because they actually fixed it a couple of years before it was a problem. So they kind of at some point anticipated it. So around 2010, I think they actually fixed the problem. But but the story is, is real in the sense that uh, originally when YouTube was created, they actually uses integers for, for the views, for saving how many views uh, there were on a video. So yeah, so that's kind of uh, an interesting story to that. So, but this is still the most widely ranged, uh, widely used range uh, of numbers because 
they can be incredibly large. Maybe some of you tried uh, playing a video game or something like that and, and the score all of a sudden broke because you went over this number. So this is this is one of the setbacks. So if you are sure that you will not go over or under these two numbers, you can use the integer for saving that. Um, because uh, the amount grows exponentially, the next one long is, uh, it, it looks like it's double the size. It, this is 32 bits and the long is actually 64 bit long. But really, uh, it's a lot bigger than that because it's exponential. So that um, this goes from like we are talking billions, like nine zeros here. So this is like um, incredibly uh, large numbers, like three, six, nine. So this is billions of billions, right? So these numbers are so big that unless you're doing uh, calculations. Uh, from in space or something like that. If you're doing uh, astrophysics or something like that, you'll never need anything bigger than this. Or maybe, yeah, if you're creating games and stuff like that, where there's no, uh, but in the real world, you you would never need bigger numbers than than this. It's incredibly uh, big. So, so I think um, this this is. Uh, in most cases, uh, extremely large numbers and never needed. So uh, be careful. I think uh, keep it uh, to integers. This is the no most normal one to use. And only use this if you really are sure that you need numbers bigger than than 2 billion. Uh, oftentimes in real values, uh, in real scenarios, it's not, it's not needed. So that's it. So these are the different uh, data types that that we can use. So these were for. Let's go back to this overview up here. So so these were for integers. These are the numbers. So if we look um, back here, if I can find it, we can see I used integer here and here. So if at some point the coordinates uh, or something like that, if if we had let's say we had coordinates that were bigger than 2 billion or something, yeah, we could run, run into a problem with this uh, using it here. So kind of the same thing is true for a floating point, except there is not that many. So if I remember correctly, float is uh, 32 bits and double is uh, 64 bits. Um, it can still store the uh, same amount of data. So what you lose here is not the, the size of the numbers, it's really uh, much more you, you're losing precision on the values. So if we go here, we can see it goes here to some big numbers as well. Um, yeah, so so you can uh, lose some uh, precision if, uh, so you see here it says real numbers up to 15 decimal digits for doubles. And if you need more than 15 decimal digits, digits you, uh, there's nothing in Java that is able to give you that. There are special uh, things you can add to, to do something like that. But again, in the real world, 15 decimal digits, um, if you're working with that, you probably have the wrong unit or something like that. So yeah, it's not something you see very often, but um, yeah. Then there's the last one. Uh, called a Boolean type. And this has to do with Boolean logic, which means binary logic. So in some cases, you just want to know if something is true or false. So really, uh, in this case, you have only one bit. So you can either have one or zero, where zero is false and one is true. So, but in Java, we don't use one and zero, we just say true if it's true or false if it's false. So that's a reserved keyword. So there's an example here where it says uh, boolean my bool. This is the name of the parameter. Oh, sorry, um, the variable. And then it says equals true. So here it's true. And then there's the non-primitive data types and that is um, 
that is classes and instances of classes that we save and stuff like that. The, these are the non-primitive ones. And there is also differences how they are stored in memory, but that, that is probably something we should look at in another in another video. So that's basically it for the different data types in Java. So we have characters, integers, floating points, and booleans, where this is uh, real numbers, and these are integers, these are just true and false, and these are characters which are used for representing text. So actually text is just a long uh, list of uh, characters in Java. So that's how it is. Yes.